Hi, I'm James Moore, founder of Coordinate Sport, a software that streamlines and accelerates business growth for children's activity providers. And today I'm welcoming you to the first episode of our Impact Bulletin bi-weekly show. The Impact Bulletin was our newsletter that went out into your inbox every two weeks. And it includes sector updates and hints and tips, trends, articles and guides, to help you build a better business. Now we're bringing it to you in a video format. And the benefit of this is that I'm able to bring guests, customers, partners, as well as members of our team onto the show to help you gain further insight into what we do at Coordinate Sport. The video will be released every two weeks along with the newsletter. And if you're not subscribed, please use the link in the description to do so and hit the notification bell. This time I get to sit down with Danny Melling from UK Active to talk all things PE and school sport premium funding. We're gonna be covering some industry news, looking at all of the most relevant stories over the last two weeks. We hear from Ben, our product manager, on an exciting feature enhancement that we've recently released. And finally, we have a deep dive into digital adoption and how to get your organization future tech ready. So at Coordinate Sport, we've been members of the UK Active Strategic Management Group for a few years now. And we're really kind of blown away and grateful for the all the work they're doing in the background, especially around lobbying and working with Parliament to ensure the funding for the sector remains and is extended. Over 600 million across the next two academic years, so that's 2022 to 24 and 24 to 25, and that's to continue the PE and school sport premium kind of as we know it. Um, that funding has been and is committed to improving the quality of PE and school sport for primary schools. Schools will need to deliver a minimum of two hours of curriculum PE every week, and then there's going to be additional support being offered through a refreshed school sport action plan. So need to look out for more details on that one. Um, there's going to be 22 million for two years of further funding for the Schools Games Organiser Network, so the SGOs. So annually, this network consists of about 450 people um, across the workforce and supporting the 2.2 million participation opportunities for children. This is all of the competition network and uh, inter-school and intra-school opportunities for competitive sport, which includes 28,000 competitive events. There's going to be a renewed focus on equal access to sports in schools. So this is really trying to reduce any barriers there are for um, equality in school sport. So offering girls and boys the same sports. So this is a new one. There's going to be 50 seven million pounds of funding for open sports facilities and um, this program is going to target the school sports facilities that are right in the heart of the community i think they uh, relate to disadvantaged communities and looking to target especially girls and pupils with special educational needs to really open up those facilities and give more access for the local community um, and yeah we're going to talk about evidence in the impact there will be a new digital reporting tool for pe and school sport premium to support schools in using the funding in the best possible way and in the best way to advantage of their pupils. Uh, and finally, there's going to be an expansion of the school games mark to help reward and showcase those schools that are working above and beyond. So joining me today is Danny Melling, who's head of membership experience. And he talks us through kind of the work that went on behind the scenes to secure that PE and school sport funding for all the schools in the UK. In recent years, the funding has been announced later and later. So it was a refreshing change and it got announced nice and early in time for all of the schools, stakeholders, providers, and, and children to get ready for next September. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a massive win. I think it's much needed. Personally speaking, as a chair of governors at a local primary school, I see firsthand the impact that the PE has. And I know in that particular school, coming back from, from COVID, uh, it was a, a focus of the head teacher to use the physical and the PE uh, as a way of supporting the children to be reintegrated back into the school day, you know, from, from lockdown uh, and the impact that had was massive. So I think two hours of, of PE, um, back on the timetable, although it would be difficult for the schools to uh, to fit it all in, I think it's absolutely crucial for the development of the children. Yeah, no, I think it was it was a collaborative approach. We've worked with sector partners uh, consistently, day in day out, working with government day in day out. Uh, the way the way everything you guys have worked, we're, we're there to represent our members. So um, regular dialogue with members, understanding their the challenges, the frustrations, um, the opportunities. That was really key for us to, to take forward and, and to, to liaise with with government, like I said, other, other sector partners. Um, as you say, the last few years, when it's the last minute announcement, there's been the feeling that maybe there's either an underspend and then not strategically spent well enough. So uh, our ask was a longer term strategy, uh, which I believe we've got now. And it gives us the, it gives us the opportunity again with our sector partners to, to really map out a longer term strategy for 
be in school sports. Yeah, I think I think that's that's uh, one for the future. Um, in terms of the, the drilling down into the details and the, and the criteria for that, but I, I think in terms of the impact of the reporting, it goes back to placing a, a priority on school sport and PE and understanding, really understanding the levels of impact that it can have on on children, both from an academic point of view, but also from uh, the, the the personal. Uh, emotional and physical well being, which is which is really important. And as we know, we know lockdown has been um there's been some challenges around around that. So that's really important that we do measure the impact and demonstrate the impact that this this funding is having. Okay, so let's take a look at some industry news. First up, Sport Wales has announced a new capital fund to benefit a number of sporting projects from communities all across Wales. The fund is part of a long term effort to make leisure facilities more energy efficient and sustainable. For more information on that one, head over to the Sports Wales website or click the link in the description. In the US, a digital health platform called ShareCare has launched a corporate scheme to improve physical activity levels for employees using VR fitness games. The pilot showed sustained improvement for employees and will now be rolled out to all of the commercial clients. This is the latest in advancements showing the significance of gamification and physical activity. As we spend so much time there, it's really important that the workplace is more active and reduces barriers for engagement. This is key for improving public health. We would love to hear about the initiatives you are running in your organisation or ideas you might have, just leave them in the comments. Finally, in the UK, sports bodies are continuing their investment in grassroots sports with the aim of making their respective events available to free-to-air broadcasters in live, recorded or highlight format. UK NGBs, including the Football Association, the Rugby Football League and the Lawn Tennis Association have all recommitted themselves to the Voluntary Code of Conduct. The code is administered by the Sport and Recreation Alliance and requires all signatories to put a minimum of 30% of their net broadcasting revenues into broadcasting their event. Just in the last year, UK sports bodies have invested £158.6 million into grassroots sports. So those are just a few of the news stories and happenings in the sector recently. For more sector headlines, news articles and guides, head over to the resources area of the Coordinate Sport website. Okay, now switching gears, let's take a look at a feature enhancement from the Coordinate Sport application. Our product team has been hard at work, continuously improving the application. And today we're gonna to look at an exciting feature enhancement around session add-ons for booking. Ben Schofield, our product manager, is going to be joining us and talking us through what goes into creating a new product and uh, delivering updates, as well as looking at the process and the why behind why we build our products the way we do. Yeah, so session add-ons is essentially just a new way to sell um, extra items to your customers. So they're attached to the sessions that you're already selling. So say, for example, you've got a Monday, Monday afternoon session at 2 p.m., you could add on an extra little uh, thing to sell. So common use case for that is consumable things like drinks and food. Um, but we've also seen it being used for equipment as well. So say, for example, you want to sell a t-shirt or some shin pads for that session, that's possible. We knew that people were wanting to use the way of, of, of selling extra things on their sessions, but people have also come to us as well and said, hey, it would be really good if we could sell a snack with this session, sell, sell some food with this session or a drink. You know, for example, a, any kind of after school club or holiday camp will be dealing with kids for, at times of the day where they need to be fed. So they just needed to be a mechanism for that. So yeah, we, we collate all of that feedback that we get from customers. And once we've collated all that feedback, we sort of figure out what the why is, like why do they need this? And then we can start thinking about how we're going to implement it as well. So sport and tech have always been like two of my major passions. And when I started out in this sector over 15 years ago, now back in the early 2000s, probably longer than 15 years, at that time, there wasn't really anything on the market or anything that would support the delivery, working in grassroots or even in elite sport. It was just early stages. Over that period, obviously the distance traveled from then to now is huge. And what we really want to do is help anyone in the sector to develop a plan for digital adoption. So every business is gonna go digital in the future. That's kind of a given. But what you're seeing now with the with the kind of acceleration and the introduction of AI tools like ChatGPT, everyone will have seen it or maybe heard of it and might be even be playing with it at the moment. What's important is that you can put those foundations into your business first to effectively make your future tech ready, okay? So what we're gonna do and what we have done is prepared and created a brand new free resource for you to download. So just head over to our website or click the link in the description where you can download a workbook so you can, yourselves and your team can assess your organization and look at where you are on that digital adoption journey. So this doesn't just mean using um, a couple of systems or using 
iPads or whatever it might be. What it is, is a holistic view of your business and see where you are now and look into the future of where you want to be. And then when you have these foundations in place and you have a clear plan, you can then understand exactly how these new technologies fit into your current plan. So at Coordinate Sport, we're committed for all organizations in our sector to become more efficient and streamlined. By doing this, it puts you back into the position of doing things you really want to do. And that's making an impact with the children and young people you're working with. So check out the download link in the description. Download the PDF and work through that in your organization. If you do need any help getting started, feel free to reach out to a member of the team. Before we wrap up, I want to highlight the Drive Phase podcast. This is our weekly show where we interview founders, leaders and experts in the industry and they talk to us about their business growth journey. We're currently on episode 102 by the time this goes out and it'd be great for you to uh, subscribe, take a listen, listen to some of the playlists as well where we break down the episodes into kind of use cases. So if you're a franchise, there's a, a list with all the franchises in there, national governing body, sports coaching organization. They're, they're all in there. We've managed to be lucky enough to interview some of the great and good in our sector. So yeah, please check that out. And here's some here's a clip from the latest episode. You know, pay yourself in the morning, but... um. But, but it was, yeah, with child labor, child labor, and everybody could exactly, scale it. Exactly. But it, it was all part of the fun of it in the early days. It was all part of the magic of, of creating something new. Okay, that's all for this episode of the Coordinate Sport Impact Bulletin. We'll see you again in a couple of weeks. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And we'll see you then.